stored. Starting things off, Mount Venus Gaming will be taking blue side while it is going to be Occupy Thrones on the red side. Yep, they don't want to play against that uh, Leo fan anymore, right? They're not going to let that happen. Joy here as well. I'm wondering if they take out the glue uh, or if we see another, Kaja. possibly Kaja. You take out maybe even a Franco here. Uh, I'm still surprised that Louis is banned. I think, again, it only came up once. Um, but they take out the Kaja. Malvinas Gaming doesn't want to allow Morrow to just go for that on-demand steal from someone from the team. So now a last ban up here for Occupy Thrones. Oh, uh, glue, right? It, it's got to be glue. That's what I'm hoping for, right? Uh, I, I don't mean, know. We just saw Lou Yi ban. So. That's, that's the thing. That's the thing. When you see Lou Yi ban, like, I feel like Trizla should be up there, you know? <laughs> Trizla is very close to my heart, and I feel like he deserves to be respected. He deserves a ban. Because he's close to your heart. Exactly. I feel the same exact way. Um, but the energy. they may, like you said, glue would be a smart decision here. Um, unless they're really going for something crazy. They are second pick, so maybe just leave everything open and see what you can trade out in this. The problem is there's not a whole lot to trade. Oh, that's the Yi. Well, glue is open. Glue is open. So do they take it? I mean, that's the question, right? Put it into the hands of Dragon here. He did have a pretty good game previously, right? Even with that Grok that he chose with. Um, but still... <laughs> It, that's not that's not, glue. that's not glue. That's one one. That's being picked up first. Yep. A lot of oh, this is what we call an open draft, especially when you're coming up with a couple of non-meta picks in your ban phase. Immediately, the pick pace suddenly changes shape. The one one is already there. Therefore, you're gonna have a potential free glue. I was expecting to see if one one was banned. Glue first picked, and then Terizla into the second. That's not going to happen, which is a little upsetting to me. But here we go, as expected. Glue is out. Ooh, Farmus though. Thoughts on Farmers after we see previous games of today not exactly working out too well. I mean, along with the glue, theoretically, you should have a lot of sustainability. Some uh, even dive into the back line potential, some bothering them. But the thing is, just like the glue, it's kind of a low percentage win rate. And theoretically, it's all supposed to work out. Ever, we all thought, I mean, even as casters, we all talked about this before this event, saying glue is going to be a very hot pick. Yeah. But um, he hasn't really honestly been showing up. Not sure of whose voice you're imitating there, but, uh, you know, he is. He is a, a big pick, but someone that we haven't seen often uh, a couple times is the Uranus pick. Esmeralda popped up again in previous series, but, you know, this is the thing. You have the Farsa there. You also are going to have to deal with the damage from the 1-1, one -one. and most people pick that Faramis because of the Cult Altar available to them and how they work around that, so still, damage being thrown at them from Malvinas Gaming is something that Occupy Thrones has to be pretty much worried about in, in a sense, but they're also, this time, they want the Luna. They, they could be flex picking it, but let's have a look at Fury 77's M4 stats so far, who has 89% team participation, ranked number one in M4. Think about it. People are thinking about these major regions dominating the charts in terms of stats. No, no. Outer regions and minor regions are taking the helm. Most definitely, but they have also just started in this bracket. So there's a little bit of time for them to catch up or possibly lose out in some of these stats. But still, My I got to give it a Fury 77. Earlier, with that response and the Luminon Blast, definitely one of the highlight plays. I'm sure we're going to see a lot of clips of that moment. Sadly, they didn't give us the replay, but it was definitely hype. I mean, that was just a perfect lineup. You know, that's what you live for when you're playing in those roles. Uh, they're actually going to go ahead and their last ban is going to be used on the Grok. And then you have the Hayabusa and the Karina being banned out by Malvinas Gaming. Really trying to limit Leo into something here. And it's, unfortunately, there's still many assassins available. And this time he's going to go with the Ling here. Wondering exactly what you want to throw in the jungle for Prince Fran specifically, right? We do see that. Fredrin is still available. Does he want to lean towards a utility jungler for this matchup? Yeah, I think Fredrin would be a really good option. But then again, it's tough because Ludox just kind of shreds you no matter what. And it's just a ticking time bomb for the side of Occupied Thrones on the Ludox. It's it's really, really tough. I would like to see an assassin, but then it feels like he's forced to play this peel because you don't want one as well as a Farsa have your back. Your team now, is Malvinas oh. Gaming doing kind of what I thought they were going to do. Pick up a bulky jungler this time. Since Occupied Throne showed their her in first in the jungle, we got to respond to it. But the Ruby pick, we haven't seen that a whole lot. I think we saw it once the other day. Um, I'm, how do you feel about it? Uh, I mean, Ruby's still great CC potential, but I feel like sometimes 
it takes a little bit longer for her to really get that durability. I mean, it takes the items and everything. And when you're, when you like Gideon said, you got a Lunox across from you. She's going to be shredding at least in the magic magic department. And so you have a couple options for you. Ruby is great though for those setups if you can get them. The flicker combination with I'm offended. If you can land those, it could set you up for a win in those objectives and everything else here. So. Solid lineups. I mean, there's a lot of CC here for Malvinas Gaming, but Occupy Thrones, they've kind of got their bases covered. Biggest question mark for me is the Faramis pick because it's been a little lackluster so far for, through the tournament. <laughs> so, I'm sorry. I got a glimpse of a couple of those sides, but it's time to jump right into the game here. Match point for Occupy Thrones as they might be able to secure a place in the next battle. But Malvinas Gaming looks to punch back. This is game number two. All right. I mean, we got a glimpse there at the emblems. And uh, I think the biggest question is especially the pacing in the jungle, right? Again, Prince Fran going towards that objective based play style this time around with the Fredrin. And that's the thing. Can you actually really utilize this? Maro, though, already aggressively going in. Gonna just get some vision here too and try to see if he can force Fran into a bad situation. But still, this rotation, the early rotation for Malvinas Gaming is gonna be really important, especially if they can secure themselves the first turtle of the game. Hey, yo, what's going on down here? They're stealing away the beetle without their jungle and they just wanna get ahead and EXP and deny it from this Ling but they're not gonna get punished whatsoever. OT is just chilling in the mid lane, gonna shove it on out and then look to move. Yeah, but here's the thing, right? I feel like this place, wait a second. Steffi with a nice lockup, probably nothing major gonna happen here. Maro forced to back off, but still, Malvina's Gaming, I feel like when there's a Ling on the field, that team wants to set a tempo, and Malvina's Gaming doesn't care about it. They want to bring in their own, but look how much material Leo's taking right now. Mm -hmm. He was able to pretty much clear out the free camps down on the bottom side of the map, not to mention that, you know, he expected Malvina's Gaming to actually start invading that beetle with the information provided by that. Lunox is able to make some really good calculated decisions overall, but in terms of the map rotation, it does feel a little strange. Nobody's really taking the initiative just yet. We're not seeing, you know, uh, we're not seeing Maro actually jumping into too many of these fights. He understands they want to get level four first before oh, anything. Oh, but there's some initiation. Dragon going to take a bit of damage, but now the rest of Malvina's game is here. Turtle is up. I think it's going to be a second until the fight ensures, though. All right, so Dragon going to be fine. He also just got that ultimate ability. The Consecration going to heal back up. Still, though, it looks like Prince Fran wants to fight for this turtle. Maro to almost level four, just hit it. So gonna wait for, you know, Leo to grab this purple buff and just get in position to fight this because they've got all the ultimates across the board here, especially when you're talking about having this Faramis. They've got a little bit more of an extension of a fight and now they're pulling it through. They get the feathered air strike out from Harley. That's a big ult out from Malvinas Gaming. They're stalling on purpose. OT is stalling this on purpose. Maro could have absolutely hit that if he flickered, but now look at the enemy purple buff. Malvinas Gaming is going to lose it, and while Prince Fran is slowly taking this away. Oh, oh cheeky, but Leo still able to get it. Gonna get stunned up there, but will be able to walk away from this freely. Prince Fran is able to secure the turtle, so almost a decent trade. When we look at the gold, OT has a small 150 advantage. Well, I mean, even with that, I, hey, they might still go here in the mid lane, but even with that trade, right, you're at least securing yourself the first turtle here. But, I mean, Prince Fran, does he care too much about the purple buff? As a Fredrin, maybe not so much in comparison to the assassin junglers here, but still, you don't want to just continue to give things away. And even noticing, you know, Joel Crew already having the Corrosion Scythe here on that 1-1, it's going to be crucial for him to find the crossbow of tanks and even those resets later on throughout the fight. And now you can see even the focus here from Occupy Thrones. Oh, in comes Gato though, showing his presence. The rest of the team also ready to make a strike, but nobody sticking their neck out too far. I, I, I don't know what's happening here. I mean, Gato just goes in, he uses that brilliance, <laughs> goes back out, he's trying to bait out Joel Cruel, but then he also knows that the rest of the team is moving on, so why exactly did he use the brilliance when he could just use the darkening? So many questions at hand. Maro? Wait a second, Maro does come in, but a feathered airstrike is there to stop him. Colt Alter comes out to save the day, and once again, it is a disengage. Come on, Gideon, what's what's going on here? I, I don't see first blood. It's been four minutes. I want my action. Weird. This is the this is supposed to be like the blood dome. So Where weird, is dude. my blood? <laughs> the blood dome. 
Well, I mean, at this point, it is kind of odd that both of these teams, when we, especially when we saw the team head-to-head, -head, there's been no first blood up to this point. I'm sure in the next 30 seconds or so when that turtle comes up, everyone's going to be rearing to go. Gano finally picking up the clock of Destiny here, too, at the four and a half minute mark. So this could be crucial, though. Jolt through, though, still the focus of Occupy Thrones. Harley also picking up Clonka Destiny, so everybody's still looking for that first, first kill blood. of the game. Everybody's still looking for that first blood, but no first blood. Sorry, Gideon, just not yet. Five minutes in. I mean, now with the turtle up, though, Leo is going to get the first poke onto it along with Joel Crew. Looking at Prince Fran and Harley coming in as well. Oh. Nice up offended on Morrow. Gato, though, comes in, but Morrow still falls. Brilliance has dropped Harley. Able to flicker. Steph taking a bit of damage. Fury comes in with the Colt Alter, giving it a little bit more sustainability. Hulk onto the backside, but Gato is found by Joel Crew. Hulk now under the tower, forced to flicker away. Fury getting a bit of poke, but this should give the turtle over to the side of Malvinus. Finally. Oh, maybe. Finally, we do see the first two kills come for us, but it's weird. It's like, oh, you want the objective, you want the kills, and then suddenly there's a huge shift in perspective. But I mean, like, even with that, it, it was just kind of a weird uh, whole fight there for that for that turtle, but Joel Crew coming out with the two kills and being able to pick up his second item now on this one one, it is going to be something that Occupy Thrones has to be conscious of because you just see a lot of this back and forth, and still Steffi looking for another possible setup here. Now, Morrow on the Kufra is going to be the big person to find the setup for Occupy Thrones, but right now they're struggling for it as this turtle is now less than half health. Most definitely, and Morrow is keeping his distance, making sure he's in range to possibly make the play happen. But Harley and Steph also being very, very sneaky inside of this bitch. Joel Crew is going to move around. Dragon trying to delay that purple buff, but it still goes into the hands of Leo. Off camera, Morrow is picked off. Harley taking a bit of damage, will fall, Hulk finds it. Hulk in the midst of things, Joel Crew gets crossbow, tang. Man, he will find it. The cold oh. altar still not enough. Finally, with the killing spree. But now OT is on the hunt. Leo here gets stunned up by Staff. Oh. And Joel Crew finds another. That is a double kill. And still the board is not taken. But they have gotten oh. what they need because it's 5-1 on the board. Oh my goodness. I mean, honestly, things could have gone so bad. <laughs> I saw Malvinus getting like, oh, I am ready to make the TikTok highlights, but there's still objectives, so Joel Cool backs off. He was so ready to go further and push himself to the limits here. But right now, I feel like Occupy Throne has kind of lost their aggressiveness. They're playing a lot more controlled for some reason, and I'm not entirely sure what the communication seemed like. They're still pressing the situation here on the top side. Gonna take them out here. Ooh, I'm offended. Locks on tomorrow. Bursted down. That's an unstoppable kill for Joel Crew. And at 5 0 and 1, at seven and a half minutes, the 1 1 is beginning to look scary. See, this is a big problem. And this is why you see 1 1 fanned out quite a bit, right? Because if you get to this point in the game, it is a 3K gold lead. But all those kills, all that gold is on that 1 1. And it gets really hard to deal with here because typically you see teams dealing with a 1 1, you know, juggling winter tranches later on through the game. That's a wind of nature being picked up by Joel Crew as well. So now he can be even more of a nuisance, even more confident in trying to get those weak points off so he can pop the crossbow of Tang. And this is why you just see them take control of Occupy Thrones jungle. Oh, Maru trying to dive in and make it onto Joel Crew, but it's still not enough. A nice I'm offended locks up Maru. He drops Hulk along with him. Fury 77 now on the run, does a nice bit of damage, but he falls. Joel Crew 6-0 in three now. That is 60% of the kills going to him. This is spelling trouble for OT. And this is why you need to ban out this 1-1. One -one. All that CC, all the commitment put on Joel Crew just does not matter. He cleanses out of the very first one, that, which is an inbuilt skill, by the way, and then immediately pops his Inspire to take out the rest of the team, gain his health back even. So right now it's quite a struggle for Occupy Thrones as they it feels like no matter what they do, Joel Cruel is just way too far ahead. So I think they need to start thinking about pickoffs and specifically Harley. See, I mean, this is the crazy thing. Even looking at the gold, Joel Cruz like almost 3K ahead of Gato, right? Which was placed in the gold lane there. And that's what you're seeing here. Just, it's so hard to deal with even these skirmishes around the buffs. Yeah, Volt trying to get into that backside, but just can't seem to commit, can't seem to do the damage. And it definitely has to do with that gold lead. Now back to what you were saying. I mean, still, it, the point being is just itemization. You're out itemized, right? And a lot of that has, again, to do with the 1-1 one -one pick, which is usually constantly banned out, right? And 
Joel Crew, knowing that, able to just kind of freely do what he wants to do and doesn't really have to worry too much just yet. Now it is 10 minutes in the game. If Occupy Thrones can hold on, maybe for dear life, they can defend themselves in the base here, but they still need time because, again, you don't have a traditional marksman here. You're relying on uh, some form of setup from Maru, maybe even Hulk. You've got a Colt Alter, but still, you got also a lot of magic damage here, and right now, it's just hard to deal with because you got Prince Fran in the front, you've got Steffi finding those I'm Offended combinations like we talked about with the Flicker, and meanwhile, Dragon's on, you know, this unkillable hero who just is a distraction at this point. Yeah, it's tough, and I think that even though Occupy Thrones have options to be aggressive, the counter-engage coming in from Malvinas Gaming and just the raw peel from Prince Fran and Steffi alone already deters them. So it just boils down to who can create that space. Do they want to have Gato do it, or do they want to have Maro to do it? Because Leo and as well as Hulk do generally struggle. They go in, they slow down. There's nothing much they can really do other than displace and pull attraction to themselves. But as long as Malvinas Gaming sticks as five, I'm not sure. Yeah, and the Lord now encroaching into enemy territory. Will connect onto that inhibitor. Gonna do a nice bit of damage, but Gato will be able to handle it so they don't lose a base tower just yet. Malvina's Gaming gonna go around and eat up OT's resources and wait for them to come out. This is even scarier, right? He just, uh, Joel Crew just locked himself in. The Malefic Roar, able to pick that. Pick that up, Steffi getting this dominant eyes. So still, Occupy Thrones trying to play catch up. 7.5k gold lead and no turrets for Occupy Thrones here. They're literally just trapped on their side, if not their base. And I mean, Joel Crew, the turret plater. Number two highest turret damage per minute. That's 951 damage. And this has been a game for him. I mean, if it was Leo's game, the previous one, this one's Joel Crew here. You know, for now, I mean, for all we know, this game could drag out longer, but let's have a look at Joel Crew, the turret plater. You know, the second highest turret damage per minute at 951. The man is able to push really fast and somehow is able to shred these turns without taking too much damage or getting punished that heavily. Yeah, another amazing statistic for one of these lower bracket teams. It definitely goes to show how much of a stars they are in their own right, but with Malvina's Gaming holding such a strong lead over this, is there an answer for OT? Well, I think one of the biggest answers for them is still going back to the point, like, do you use Gato to, I, whether it's the Brilliance, whether it's those Chaos Balls, to try to melt someone down here, if you can at this point, do you have Hulk either initiate with the split split or peel for you. Leo also, I think he's got a couple items now on this link. He's, he's got damage, but I feel like the big problem is there's just too much even durability from Malvinas Gaming because of that gold lead. Even, even looking at the items here, I think he's still got to build another, his third one. But at this point, you don't even really want to see them contest this Lord. They might be better off just defending in their base for another one while they can play catch up here. Yeah, Maro will get the Tyrant's Revenge on a Steffi, but a nice hop offended comes on to Hulk and Fury. Oh. Bolt Alter does come out, but they don't want to let it up. Joel Crew popping off with that crossbow of Tang. Fury goes down, everyone else back to base. Leo caught in the midst of the field. Gonna try to get hunted down from Dragon, but this should be a possible Lord for the side of, Ma the side of Malvinas. And this is what we were talking about earlier. No matter what aggressive moves coming out from OT, from Mauro specifically does, he instantly gets cleansed away. The ant, uh, the ant, the peel coming in from Prince Fran, and not to mention just the counter engagement coming out from Steffi. He gets hit by it, doesn't care, quickly taunts everybody and pulls them in with a I'm offended. So now OT are on the back foot even further than before, and mostly can't recover from this position. 9k gold lead basically going to be 10 once that Luminous Lord crashes into the inhibitor. Yeah, I think, you know, Leo's trying his best here really to put pressure anywhere that he can, but he's also going to be careful because in this defense, you're probably going to see Steffi try to just set up a play with a flicker. I'm offended combination. They still have quite a few options. But now they've got to work on this Lord here on the bottom side. Most definitely it does get the crash because it is enhanced. 
A lot of green dots on the side of Malvinas, but the same thing goes for Mena. Ults are ready to go. They want to move into this middle inhibitor, try to take as much as they can. They don't want to go too deep. The dragon will hold down the front line. Able to zone Leo oh. and got away, but now the Amapendant locks in. Feathered airstrike comes down. Holt coming onto the backside, but Steffi does fall. OT trying to make the response here. Looks like we're going for a ride along with Hulk, but Prince Fran is caught in the midst of four members and will fall as well. That is a three for zero trade. They do take some inhibitors, but Occupy Thrones is answering back. Well, I mean, you can consider that a at least successful defense here for Occupy Thrones. They also narrowed down that gold gap by about, what, 3,000 gold or so. And they might be able to make some more moves across the map. They didn't get Joel Crew, unfortunately. But the fact that Steffi initiated that, right? They, as we expected, he initiated that fight with the I'm Offended, and it didn't go the way they wanted to. They wanted to end the game there, but uh, Occupy Thrones able to hold on for it. Yeah, unable to close out, and uh, man, quite the swing in OT's favor now. They might actually have a chance if they're able to find a fight like that once more, now that the blue does, well, I mean, Hulk in particular, is able to kind of tank just enough damage from Joel Crew to waste his time and allow the rest of his team to go for the bigger picks. Mm, and looking at the items, I mean, at least for, you know, Occupy Thrones, they've got the damage in terms of magic, right? You've got Fury having that Divine Glaive now with the Glowing Wand. He's got the Lightning Crunch, and he's pretty much where he needs to be. You also have, again, Gato is that big thing because that's what you chose to put in the gold lane here. Now, you do lack that Marchman, but you've got a lot of burst potential. The penetration is there, and hopefully Leo can follow up. If Leo continues to put pressure around the map, open it up a little bit better, they could still play around that, but Morrow charging up here in the bush. Oh, big flicker. That is huge. Harley goes down along with Joel Crew. Stephanie wow. could be next. Leo going to try to find him, use the conceal, just try to escape, but it's a double kill for Leo. Prince Fran into the back line, will get immobilized, and Blues going to take him for a ride back to the team. Prince Fran trying to do everything he can, but Leo will get the triple and wipe them out. Nothing but Dragon stands against Occupy Thrones right now. Should be an easy lord. Oh, uh, I don't know what the thought process was there, but Joel Crew, unfortunately, purposefully showing himself walking into yeah. the lane rush like that against the Kufra, who doesn't mind if there's multiple, it means more value. I thought I was going to get a one for one. He got a three for one. That was massive. I mean, as we were just trying to figure out how can Occupy Thrones get back into the game, just like that, that gold lead completely gone here. And even Gato picking up the Divine Glaive because of that whole, that whole skirmish. They've now got the Lord marching with them in the bottom side. They're gonna be looking to focus on possibly even inhibitor turret if they can get there. So now Malvinas Gaming in a very dire situation. You've got Leo also pushing into the tier one on the top side. Let's see if Malvinas Gaming can defend this because that was a huge blunder on the bottom side. Oh, I mean, they're let's look at the high ground team defense at this point because now Occupy Thrones are taking the lead, but it doesn't really technically matter at this point other than the situational items. Uh, probably not the best use of Feathered Airstrike there. Probably could have waited a little bit until it got closer towards the inhibitor turret because they knew that the outer turrets are basically gone at this stage with a Luminous Lord 17 minutes into the game. However, if we talk about open... Oh, no. Yeah, a little bit of suppression. Oh! But wait a second. I'm Offended comes in and Fury goes down. Joel Crew going to pick that up. It comes across both Tang. Morrow will be next. Hulk forced to back off. Leo now on the boss side. Joel Crew wants to try to find him, but he is a slippery boy. Should be able to escape this. Wait a second. Joel Crew still hunting him down, but Leo is going to be able to get away. It is back and forth. Man, Leo's doing work again. I mean, you got to give it up to the guy. He picks up the BOD here, but knowing the situation they were in, what, for 12, 13 minutes of the game? He has found wins where he could, and it's resulted into basically Occupy Thrones being in this game, possibly ending this and, ta and sending Malvinas Gaming home, right? And Leo, whether he's pushing lanes, whether he's pushing turrets, it's opening up the map for Occupy Thrones here. I mean, look at the goal for Leo. <laughs> yeah, he's been, he's definitely been playing a different game from the rest of his team, and honestly, <laughs> wait, hold up, Leo, are you in trouble? Oh, maybe. Oh. Force uses Tempest Blades as an escape. In comes Dragon, trying to sandwich it in, but man, Leo, Leo, that, that's all I got to say. The Leo, he, the Leo, he is the literal economy 
of <laughs> OT at this stage of the game, right? And Malvinas Kimi, this has been a series of unfortunate events. Like every particular play that they've thought of, either they didn't think it all the way through and got punished for it, and now if they had just closed out this game, we would have already been on game three, and Malvinas Kimi would have the momentum. But now that it's been stopped, OT are starting. This is a real test of the mental between both of these teams. Throw the strategy out right now because if they cannot execute and more importantly so if their mental breaks at this crucial part of the game it's going to be over yeah i mean at this point right everybody's items are almost at this pretty much locked in right you're going to see some juggling uh especially from the side of occupy thrones because they've got to juggle the winter tranchin when joel crew pops that crossbow of tang if they can negate that and time it well oro doesn't want to juggle anything except for joel crew now you Prince Fran to. on the run. Fury gonna pop that Colt Alter. Aro pushes him back. Bit more damage. Leo looking for Harley. Can't quite find him. Gonna get pulled in from that. I'm offended. Leo may go oh. down here. Immortality does pop. Fury wants to try to keep them at bay. Leo will be able to escape. Fury uses the flicker, but the taunt comes in. Prince Fran wants something. Aro gonna come in to try to create more distance. Well, all of this is happening. Gato working on the Lord. So it is a good play from Occupy Throne. You called it. You called it, nice soon. They found it as you mentioned it. Why was he there? <laughs> I mean, that's, again, Joel Crew, you're wondering, like, you know, you don't have to be there in the middle of that, uh, in between that pit when there. you know Morrow is some, you know, in a bush. And that's the thing. Remember, you can't hear that charge up, right? You can't yep. hear that. So that's just a surprise effect. And again, why Kufra seems to be picked up so often because... When he charges up, comes in with that Tyrant's Rage, it's really hard to deal with. Oh. So now it's again, Malvinas Gaming on the defense here, and look at that gold lead that Occupy Thrones has. Really, at this point, it just comes down to juggling those items and marching in with this Lord here. Joel Krul is getting very impatient here. He know he could have ended this game much sooner, but here we go. Potential yeah. final push. Lord has encroached into this base. Feathered Air Strike does come down, but the Cold Alter is enough to sustain, and Harley will bite the bullet. Next will be Steph, possibly very low. Holt trying to get in the backside, but they are going <laughs> at it, and the base falls. Occupy Thrones will claim the victory tonight. Malvinas Gaming will be forced to go home. GG's, well played. Congratulations, Occupy Thrones. Move on to the next stage, but our heart felt goes out to Malvinas Gaming. They were so very close to closing this. They had everything, but they couldn't close it out. Well done, Occupy Thrones. Man, I gotta say, it's you know, it's great to see these guys smile too. And like I said, I feel like Leo there is just like, whew. You know, the work he put in on that Ling, bouncing around, grabbing the objectives, putting pressure where they needed to. Again, what was the gold lead? I think at one point it was, what, 10K? Yes. In favor of Malvinas Gaming when they are pushing into that base? So that is, a, that is a game where you just feel like, oh, everything we did, it paid off here. Regardless, the sportsmanship at an all-time high here, both of these teams playing like absolute champions and the heart of champions. But with that being said, Occupy Thrones, enjoy your walk of fame down all the way outside. Please give them a round of applause as we throw it over to our analysts at the analyst segment to break down